Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. swell up my heart with pride, man. <laughs> Me and him, I met Ellie May. Come on down, Ellie. Oh, you got her all purtied up for a date, huh? Purtied up ain't the half of it. When that boy sees Ellie, he's gonna drop to his knees and pop the question today, just like it happened to me 60 years ago. How can you be sure? Looky yonder. There's me, 60 years ago, head to toe. Let out a little in between. <laughs> what took you so long, girl? Well, I thought I'd never get them rascals buttoned up. <laughs> Lost my button hook. Well, Jed, don't she just fair take your breath away? She does for a fact, Granny. But, uh, is women still wearing them kind of clothes today? No. And that's why so many ain't getting married. <laughs> what you mean? Women's clothes today don't leave nothing for men to wonder about. You take them women down to the Vittle store. Them women come in there wearing little shorts and something they call stretch pants. They all look like a four-pound sausage stuffed into a two-pound skin. Right in the Vittle store, huh? Oh, it's shameful. Why, them women show more than a sideshow wiggle dancer at a county fair. Ain't you been down there? Ain't you seen them? No, but you sure put me in the mood to go. <laughs> Nothing to fun about you. You want your daughter to have a happy marriage, don't you? Oh, of course I do, but... Uh... Ellie, come here. Oh, no, 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 Ellie. Take little bitty steps and hike your skirt a mite. <laughs> no, no. Now, honey, you watch me. <laughs> Give him a little easy glimpse of your calf. <laughs> Drives a man mad. Granny, uh, 60 years is a long time, and things change, including what drives a man mad. Are you trying to tell me? Howdy, everybody. Hey, Ellie, you're... <laughs> What's so funny? You! What's that thing you got on your head? That's an expensive hat. Special made. Cost my paw two pigs and a chicken. If you ask me, it looked better to wear the two pigs and the chicken. <laughs> I reckon nobody asked you, Jethro. Well, all right. But her fellow's coming up the driveway now, so she better hurry and get into some court and clothes. She's wearing court and clothes. Them? There he is. I'll go let him in. No, 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 Ellie. It ain't proper for a young girl to be ready when her beau comes to the front door. We'll wait in here. Your paw let him in. I sure hope I can remember his names. He sure does have a bunch of them. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Clampett. Howdy there, young fella. Jethro, you remember Mr. CPA, Rod Fern, Fred Penn, Fern Pot? <laughs> Penrod. I always forget that one. That's my name, simply Penrod. Well, simply, this here is Jethro. Good to see you again, simply. Uh, Fred. No, uh, that's Jethro. I'm Jed. I'm Fred. Now you're getting it. 
I don't blame you for getting mixed up with other folks' names. You got enough to do to remember your own. You must have eight or ten. Howdy, Mr. Redfern. You're in for a surprise. Uh, Ellie? No, no. Simply, this here's Granny. Simply? That's what he wants us to call him. Simply Penrod. Please be. I never could remember all them other names. Hi there, Fred. Ellie. What are you, a Gibson girl? Shucks, no, I'm a clampin'. Give the boy credit, Ellie. He remembered your first name. That's better than he did with any of the rest of it. I, I mean, what are you doing in this strange costume? Funny looking, ain't it, Sim? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> you think that's funny, do you? Walk for him, Ellie. <laughs> You're right, that's really funny. Hi, <laughs> you silly peeps. Now, uh, you don't simply know. Simply, Ellie Ark, it's time for you to get going. Come on. Uh, maybe we ought to stay here, Ellie, may I? I uh, all I've got is my motor scooter. Well, you said you'd ice pop our car. Oh. <laughs> there it is, simply. It's all yours. Is, is this your car, Mr. Clampett? Well, uh, strictly speaking, it belongs to my cousin Pearl, but uh, I can keep it as long as I keep her boy Jethro. I, I'm afraid I don't know how to drive this. Jethro! Uh, so maybe we'd just better stay here instead of going out to dinner. Oh, fine with me. Granny's cooking up hog jowls. <laughs> maybe we can both get on the scooter. Oh, no need to do that, youngins. Uh, Jethro, drive any place you want to go. Sure I will. Come on, Fred. Uh, up there? Yeah, come on, Philip Bella. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, he laughs anymore at your cotton dress. Make him walk home. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're making a mistake, letting that city whippersnapper court Ellie. Well, now, Mr. Drysdale seems to set great store by young Fernpod, uh, simply. Says he's gonna move right up the ladder. Ladder? What's he do down the bank? Wash windows? <laughs> hey, I understand it. He's got something to do with bookkeeping. Let's keep him on a high shelf if he has to climb for him. <laughs> I say that we ought to take Ellie home and get her married to a hill man. She's a filly with a high spirit. And she needs a strong hand at the ring. Well, Leaf Creek's mighty anxious for his boy Dub to get hitched to Ellie. Uh, he's strong. I said a hill man, not a gully jumping mud crawler. <laughs> All right, Randy. He's a no account son of a no account father. Thieves, both of them. All right, Randy. Why, they'd steal a hot stove and come back for the smoke. <laughs> I'm sorry I mentioned it. Now let's forget about Dub Creek. That suits me fine. <laughs> Why, even that name ain't rightfully his. Dub? Got it from a school teacher. Somebody asked her if Leaf's boy was smart or dumb, and she had a cold when she answered them. <laughs> That's the dumbest boy that ever drawed bread. <laughs> well, boy, now you're going to commence a courting that sweet, beautiful, rich Ellie Mae. Wake up, boy. I'm awake, Paul. And open your eyes. What for? Because we's there. We's where? At Jed Clampett's house, doggone it. Now open your eyes and have a look. What for? I believe you. <laughs> now, boy, when they open the door, you let your pa do all the talking, you hear? Selling the Clampets on letting you marry into their family is gonna be hard on sneaking daylight past the rooster. <laughs> Wake up, boy. I'm talking on you. I'm awake, Pa. Then look at me. What fur? I know what you look like. <laughs> oh, there now. I, I got that nasty old bee that stung you on the head. Why, <laughs> Jed Clampett. I didn't see you standing there. You know my boy, Doug. Well, yeah, I do. Howdy, Doug. Boy, Mr. Clampett done said howdy on you. Now, why don't you answer him? Because you said when they opened my door to let you do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> I ought to see another bee. You hear smart, boy? Answer the man. Uh, only when Paul hits me. <laughs> I don't want to buzz him by. You all better come in out of the bees. Well, thank you, Jed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Got the sack. Oh, why, this here is just a little present the dub brought out for Ellie Mae. 
A nice batch of black walnuts, the kind you can't grow out here. Oh, that's my nice, you dub. Uh, where'd you get them? Answer the man. I stole them. <laughs> What he means is they hadn't fallen off in the tree yet, and he had to pick them. Now, to a nature lover like my dove, that's the same as stealing them baby walnuts from their mother. Oh, sweet he is. Yeah, I reckon that's where the bees took out after him. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jed, we just plumb tuck it out from toting these here walnuts all the way out here to Ellie. Now, couldn't we just spend the night in your barn? We'd curl up in the hay. We wouldn't be no trouble to nobody. Leaf, uh, we ain't got a barn. There's plenty of bedrooms upstairs. As long as you keep quiet and don't rile up Granny, you're welcome to use them. Did you hear that, boy? Didn't I tell you Jed was like that? Didn't I tell you he was the salt of the earth, had a lot of heart? No, you just said he had a lot of money. Get out of the suitcase, boy. <laughs> you know, it must be all them bee stags that got his head all rattled. <laughs> I'm putting you in here for the sake of peace and quiet tonight. This room's the furthest away from Granny's. Well, shucks, Jed. Granny's snoring ain't gonna bother us none. <laughs> Ooh, wee! This is right out of a castle. That's what it is. What do you think of this, Dub? Hey, it takes your breath away, don't it? Come on, boy, speak up. Tell Mr. Clampin what you think of this beautiful room he's giving us. Yeah, the roof leaks, huh? Don't think so, Dub. Of course it don't leak. What do you want to say a dub thing like that for? Because there's a tent over the bed. <laughs> You're going to ruin my hat. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it if you two be as quiet as you can. I don't want Granny to know you're here, leastwise not just yet. I'll break it to her gently in the morning. Oh, we understand, Jed. I don't. <laughs> It must be them bee stangs, Jeff. He'll be all right as soon as he rests and has some vittles. I'll bring up some grits and jowls directly. You're a good man, Jed. I says to Morty before we left, I says, dry your eyes, Morty. I says, Jed Clampett's a good man. He'll treat me and Dub just like we was his own. He'll board us and bed us, salt of the earth, Jed. Leif, you hadn't ought to waste all that. Out here in Beverly Hills, you can sack it and sell it. <laughs> Now, you get yourself cleaned up, and you get into them store-bought and city-made cotton clothes of yours, and you ask Ellie Mae to marry you. You gotta make that girl your finance before Granny runs us off. Uh, I think you mean fiancy. You mean fiancy. I mean finance. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jed, I just seen old Lave Creek's car out front. Is he here? Shh, I don't want Granny to know that he's here. They? He bring his boy with him. Dub? Is old Dub Crick here? <laughs> hey, Dub! <laughs> boy, I just told you. I don't want Granny to know that he's here. Now, come on, let's get the car out of sight before she sees it. Where's Ellie Mae at, Simply? Oh, they're out riding. I learned him how to drive the truck. All right, now, take Leif's car, put it over behind them bushes yonder. Ain't got no key in it. I'll just let off the brake and push it. Need any help? Shucks, no. Remember now, keep this whole thing quiet. Okay. Not so fast, Jethro. You're headed for the hill. Look out. Catch it, Jethro. Got away from me, Uncle Jed. Yeah, I see it there. There she goes. Looks like Leif and his boy is going to be with us longer than I figured. What was it, Paul? Some poor sucker's car just went crashing down that hillside. <laughs> you know, if I wasn't sure our car was parked out front, I'd have... Hey, there's that old bank of Drysdale. He's the rascal I want to talk to. He runs the bank. Are we going to rob it? <laughs> I'm going to get you a job in that bank. Well, then we're gonna rob it, huh? <laughs> Who gave me a cop? Go, 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 go! Come in, Mr. Drysdale. Granny, did you hear that loud noise? Yeah. Don't 
Don't let it worry you. It's my grits exploding. The grits exploding? Yep, they do it every time a pressure cooker. Would you care to stay for vittles? We're having some blowed up grits and some deep fried hog jowls. Oh, no, thank you, Granny. And a nice green salad. Wilted crabgrass. No, thank you. Tadpole soup and some candied crawdad tails. No, really. As a matter of fact, Miss Hathaway is having dinner at our house, and I was hoping that Ellie May and young Fernpile could join us. Mm. Oh, he's a young CPA at my bank. Oh, you mean simply. Who? You're the window washer. Who? <laughs> Greetings, Granny. I'm sorry, Chief, but Mrs. Drawsdale wants you to come at once. She's ready to serve the shrimp. <laughs> Looks like simply come while you were gone. <laughs> what? You better not keep your wife waiting. Au revoir, Granny. Same to you. Whatever it is. <laughs> Miss Jane and handsome young banker Drysdale. You know, for a minute there, I thought I was seeing Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. Oh! <laughs> Bye, George Crick. You're too good for this kind of backbreaking work. Now, won't you reconsider taking a job in my bank? You mean a white collar job? Yes. Well, sir, it's too late for me to change the hard working habits of a lifetime. All I can hope for is that my boy has it better. You have a son? Well, you wouldn't know he was my son, ma'am. My boy, Dub, has a head on his shoulders. Smart lad, eh? Mr. Drysdale, smart just ain't the word for that boy. <laughs> Mr. Crick's son sounds like a natural for our executive trainee program. Just what I was thinking. Mr. Crick, can your boy fly out here and talk to me about a job? Fly? Why, Mr. Drysdale, just for the honor of shaking your hand, that boy would crawl out here on his hands and knees. Well, just have him fly out. I can't, Mr. Drysdale. I'm a poor man. All I got are the rags on my back. Oh, of course. How, how thoughtless of me. Here. Sir, I, I couldn't take money from you. I'll have him walk out. Walk? Oh, it's over 2,000 miles. It would take him weeks. Well, he can run some of the way. <laughs> Nonsense here. If he flies, you'll be here in a few hours. Oh, sir, all this money. It's worth every penny to have Leif Crick's son in my bank. Chip off the old block, I'll wager. Oh, yes, ma'am. That boy is a born crook. I, I mean, crook. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you both. I'll run tell him. Uh, telegraph him. <laughs> if I didn't know better, I'd swear you were Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. <laughs> Wonderful man. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> How do you do? I pressure cook 16 pounds of grits, 30 sets of hog jowls. Nobody shows up to eat. Grits and jowls, come and get them or I'll throw them out. If there's anybody upstairs, Biggles is ready. Don't throw them out. I'm coming. <laughs> 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 Jed, after we tried so hard. Ow! My toe! It's be gonna rain. Why don't you go out in the kitchen and have some vittles? Well, just because it's gonna rain ain't no cause to stop a fellow's toe. <laughs> now then, Granny, uh, just where did you see this, uh, Crick, was it? Uh... Yes, it was, was it? Doug Crick, in his underwear. He came flying down them stairs, and when I yelled at him, he went flying back up. Hmm, kind of like when you seen that giant jackrabbit nobody else could see, huh? That jackrabbit was here, and Dub Creek is here, and probably is no good paw along with him. Well, then, uh, their car ought to be sitting out front, huh? Yeah, let's go set fire to it. <laughs> Was it there? No. Yeah, 
Come on now, let's go have some vittles and we'll all feel better. working too hard. I tell you, I've seen him. <laughs> Where are you going, Granny? I'm going to search this house top to bottom till I find that overgrown varmint. Oh, what would a jackrabbit be doing upstairs? I ain't looking for a jackrabbit. How <laughs> long, Granny? Well, look who's here. You young folks home kind of early, ain't you? Well, we had to come home. There are no lights on that truck. What you want to do, read? <laughs> Did you see anything of Leif Creek's car out front? No, ma'am. Did you see anything of Leif? No, ma'am. How about his boy, Dub? No, ma'am. I don't suppose you saw anything of a giant jackrabbit. <laughs> uh, you women folks is through whispering. I think you ought to invite this young fellow to stay for supper. How about it, simply? Fred. No, I'm Jeff. Mr. Clampett, my name is Fred Penrod, period. He's come up with another one. Well, let's go sit at the table before my tadpole soup gets cold. Oh, I, I, I just remembered. Uh, I've got to work on the books tonight. Uh, so long, everybody. I'll be seeing you, Fred. Uh, manana, Ellie. <laughs> manana. I wish that boy would pick out one favorite name and stick to it. Granny, can I take off my court and dress now? Sure, honey. I'll keep the soup hot. Won't take me long. Hurry up, boy. Ellie Mae's come home. Ain't you in them high-class, big-city court and clothes yet? Almost, Pa. And they is really something. Uh, you can't even tell they secondhand. Well, come on out here. Let me have a look. <laughs> I've never seen nothing like that before. Are you sure them's real big city clothes? Yes, sir. Luke Short over to General Store and Sibley bought these off a fella that worked at the racetrack in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Well, cities just don't come no bigger than Hot Springs. Well, that's the truth. And you know what this outfit's worth, including the watch and the yellow shoes? How much? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars? That's what I call robbery. Yeah, I know you'd be proud. It's the most I ever stole. <laughs> now, that is. Commencing tomorrow, you're going to be working at Mr. Drysdale's bank. Now, by dingies, we'll find out if I'm seeing spooks or cricks. I never knew a crick yet to pass up free grits and jowls. <laughs> Pressure cooks the grits. Tenders them up real nice. Dad! Dad! Come help me, I caught him! Caught who, Granny? Just pull on this rope. You'll see. <laughs> well, does that look like a vision? <laughs> Like Jethro. Well, it's worth your life to try to get seconds around here. I'm sorry, Jethro. I thought it was one of the cricks. <laughs> Yonder she is, boy. Get the cotton. Which one? <laughs> I think your best chance is with the little one. <laughs> Now 
it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.